To repair your Samsung Galaxy S4, you will need a small Phillips and bladed screwdriver and a plastic separation tool. You can use a spudger, guitar pick, plastic knife or your thumbnail. You might also need to use some tweezers and a small pin. Let's make sure the device is completely shut down. Now remove the battery cover. If your battery cover supports wireless charging, there'll be a small circuit in the back, which will connect with one of these sets of contacts. Now remove the battery. Take out your SIM and micro SD card. To remove the loudspeaker, undo these four screws. These are all the same size, so don't worry about getting them mixed up. Using the plastic tool so you don't damage the case, gently lift each side to release a clip. Then you can lift the speaker assembly away. These gold contacts are for the loudspeaker and these two silver contacts are for your 3G and GSM antenna. This small hole is a air vent for the loudspeaker. Now we can undo the rest of the case screws. Again these are the same size. Now we need to release the clips around the outside edge using your thumbnail or a plastic tool. Start from the bottom and slowly work your way around the outside edge. I've marked where the clips are in white. If you don't have a guitar pick you can use a plastic knife. Keep releasing those clips around the outside. Now lift the rear housing away. This is the contact for the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antenna, which you can see on the rear. And this is the contact for the GPS antenna. And this is the infrared blaster LED lens. You might need to remove this and switch this over to your new case. These are the contacts for the 4G antenna. This is a moisture sensor which changes colour if it's been wet. And if your new case doesn't come with these foam pads, then you can switch these over to your new one. You can remove and replace the volume and power switch by lifting each end. At the bottom, this is the hole for the main voice microphone. You might need to switch this rubber gasket over to a new case. When you put it back in, make sure it sits down nice and flat. At 
and this small white paper is also a moisture sensor. To remove the micro USB and microphone assembly, we need to lift this metal clamp. It's tempting to lever on this side, but you might damage the circuit board. Let's come over this side and twist and lift the metal clamp up and then put that aside. Now very carefully and gently unplug the 3G and GSM antenna flex cable. Now unplug the touch and home key flex cable. Small amount of adhesive holding that down. Now unplug this flex cable. And there's a small amount of double tape holding this in place. Now using a thin blade or a screwdriver, gently ease and lift this away from the casing. This is the main voice microphone and the sound enters through this small hole. These connections are for the 3G GSM antenna and these are for the loudspeaker. To remove the micro SD and SIM tray, disconnect this flex cable. And using a thin blade, separate the double adhesive that holds it in place. You can use some heat from a hairdryer or a fan heater to make this a bit easier. And if you're replacing it, don't worry too much about any damage. To remove the earpiece, proximity sensor and camera, lift this small bracket up and put that aside. Disconnect the front camera. And disconnect the earpiece. Gently lift that away and ease the earpiece out of the case. This is an infrared LED and this is the proximity and gesture sensor. If you're replacing this, it might not come with this rubber gasket. So you need to lift this off from the old one and change it over to your new one. There is also a plastic spacer which you may need to swap over to your new part. Try and keep this double adhesive on the plastic spacer. If your new flex cable doesn't come with double adhesive already attached, you might be able to reuse this tape. When you put it back together, hold the plastic spacer this way round Place your cable on. Once you're happy that's lined up, bring the sensor down and push it into place. And then you can put that aside. To remove the headphone socket, we need to remove the main board. Start by undoing this single black screw. and gently disconnect this antenna flex cable 
and put that aside. Disconnect the main screen flex cable. And this one's for the headphone socket and ambient light sensor. And now we can lift the main board away. Be careful of the camera. Make sure the camera's released. This is volume up and volume down. Your screen lock and power switch. And these contacts are for the vibrating motor. To remove the main camera, disconnect the flex cable. And if you need to replace the glass lens, gently ease this metal frame off of the camera. You can use some heat to soften the adhesive. Using a small pin or needle, you can leave the glass up. It's quite a strong double-sided adhesive. Again, you can use some heat to make this easier. Then put your replacement back on and replace the metal bezel. Make sure the three pins are facing away from the flex connector. And we can put that aside. This is an external test port for the 3G GSM radio, and this test port's for the 4G radio. These two microphones receive their sound through these two small holes. And this is your LED flash, and this is the wireless charging connections. To remove the headphone socket, undo this single silver screw. This is quite a bit smaller than the others, so you can't get it mixed up. Now lift that away. This contains the notification LED and ambient light sensor. This also contains two rubber microphone gaskets, which you might need to switch over to a new headphone socket. This can be quite tricky as they're very small. Hopefully your new headphone socket will come with these already fitted. If not, you can swap them over and make sure that that sits all the way in and nice and flat. And there's another rubber gasket. And this microphone gasket is for the front facing camera. Once you're happy they're sitting down nicely, put the ambient light sensor back in place. You might also need to remove this rubber gasket from the headphone socket and then transfer that over to your new one. And you can put that aside. Now we can remove the vibrating motor. And if your new screen doesn't come with this notification LED diffuser, make sure you swap this over to a new screen. If your replacement screen doesn't come with this heatsink compound, you'll need to remove it and swap it over to your new one. Without this, the processor will get hot and the phone will run slow. If you need to replace your home key flex cable, or you're replacing the screen or the frame, you can click the link up here for a video on how to do this.
to reassemble, place the vibrating motor into its hole, and make sure the small pin lines up with the circuit board. Now replace the headphone socket. and replace that short silver screw. Now replace the camera back onto the main board. Slide that in from the side and plug it in. Now lift the flex cable for the headphone socket up, place the main board down, make sure the camera locates and now we can replace that single black screw. Now reconnect the screen cable, the headphone socket and ambient light sensor. Now the earpiece, proximity and gesture sensor. Make sure that goes all the way down. Make sure the proximity sensor is pushed all the way down up against the glass, otherwise the screen will go blank during voice calls. Now reconnect the cable, replace the front camera. Now replace the SIM and SD tray. Remove the protective film if it's a new one. And when you place it on, make sure these white marks line up with the pins on the main board. Now try not to push on the metal tray and just push around the edges to stick it down into place. Reconnect. Now we can replace the micro USB microphone flex cable. Make sure it goes underneath the touch and home key flex. And before you stick it down, plug this in first. and gently push that down. And make sure the small pins line up with the holes in the flex cable. Be careful when you press on this that you don't damage the sprung connections. Now reconnect the home and touch key flex. Now replace the metal clamp that goes on the USB socket. This will only go on the correct way. And finally the 3G GSM antenna flex. This can be quite tricky. Line it up, then push it down. Just keep
keep moving that around until it lines up. And then push it into place. Now replace that metal clip that holds the camera and proximity sensor in place. So line up and then push down. Now replace the rear housing. Squeeze all those clips down around the outside. Now replace those screws. Now replace the speaker antenna assembly. And put the last four screws in. Place the SIM and micro SD card, your battery, and your battery cover. Switch it on. And we now have a fully repaired Samsung Galaxy S4. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this. Don't forget to subscribe and give me the thumbs up and I'll do my best to make some more.